Hello, good evening, and welcome to Climber Stadium, where tonight on WOSN, we've got the season lid lifter of the 2024 high school football season as the visiting Pandora Gilboa Rockets will take on the homestanding Columbus, Bull Columbus Grove Bulldogs. I'm Garrett Seawright, joined alongside Evan Skilder, and we've got all of the action for you here tonight. And Evan, Columbus Grove, I don't think, can wait any longer to get this game started after way last year in week one ended for the Bulldogs. Man, what a chip on the shoulder they have coming into this game. A, a game last year where the Rockets were able to pull it out 25-22. Columbus Grove had the lead with under two minutes to go, but the Rockets able to battle back and score on a last second touchdown pass from Corey Girton, who we'll see tonight for the Rockets. And he connected with Aiden Morris, who we won't see, and we'll talk more throughout the game about the gap that he leaves for the Rockets. And Pandora Gilboa did win the coin toss. They elected to defer, so they'll kick it away to Columbus Grove to begin tonight's matchup as the numbers tick down on the Sprunger Insurance scoreboard as we get set for night number one of high school football, a beautiful weather weekend here in West Central Ohio. Looking forward to a fantastic opening weekend of the season. Absolutely. Love kicking it off with the rivalry, too. Two teams that have had some success lately. Two programs that traditionally make deep runs in the playoffs. We saw Columbus Grove make a deep run last year. They finished 12-3, and 8-2 in the Northwest Conference. Uh, they are, Sorry, 8-0 in the Northwest Conference, winning the conference. 7-3, and 5-1 and in the BBC for Pandora Gilboa. So two teams coming off great seasons. A uh, little bit of a reload for Pandora, although so they've got a lot, of, a lot back that we'll talk about when their offense hits the field. But I'm just really looking forward to seeing these two teams go at it. They do not like each other. If my math is correct, Pandora holds the all-time lead, 57-37. Uh, uh, and there's four ties within this rivalry as well. That's a lot of football that's been played between these two teams. And I can't wait to see this one kick off in moments. Yeah, it is year 100 of football at Columbus Grove and the 73rd all-time meeting tonight between these two Route 12 rivals as the football is teed up by Lane Lee of Pandora Gilboa. And he'll get sent to send it away back deep to Trevin Baxter and the Bulldogs. Sure we'll try to keep it away from number three on the <laughs> top side of your screen. That's Trenton Barraza. They'll go short. Baxter will catch it at the 35-yard line. We'll break to the outside. Lee will take him down at the 45. But great starting field position for Columbus Grove as Trevin Baxter, the 5'11", 175-pound junior, brings it out near midfield. And that is where Columbus Grove will begin tonight's matchup. Well, sometimes you work so hard to keep the ball away from a certain returner that you end up giving up good field position to a different one as this one will start up around the 45-yard line. And this Columbus Grove offense, my goodness, they have some weapons, don't they? They absolutely do. The offensive line from left to right, four seniors and a junior, Kylan Mays, Brady Fierce, Ty Meyer, Leighton Blankenmeyer, and Jacob Leininger up front. Quarterback Landon Best, first team All-Northwest Conference performer as a sophomore last year. Even more experience as the 5'11 junior stands in the pistol with Trenton Barraza, one of the state's best running backs behind him. He'll look to Barraza. Now we'll go downfield. It's caught over the middle of the field at the logo to the other 45-yard line. And that catch is made by Kyle Hopkins. And it's going to be a first down on the first play of the season for the Bulldogs. Yeah, kind of surprising to see them go to the air, but uh, I'll tell you what, a good pass over the top from a quarterback that completed 67% of his passes last season, 20 touchdowns, 9 interceptions, threw for a total of 1,600 yards, and now they're in the Wildcat with Barraza. Three I'm wide. sorry, no, they're not. <laughs> Three wide receivers to the right as Barraza will get the handoff, tried to move away from a defender, now pushed backwards, still on his feet, working to the far sideline, has a bevy of blockers, Barraza out in front of him, a first down and more. He'll be pushed out just out inside the 20-yard line, but not before he picks up a Web Insurance Agency first down on an electrifying play. Well, this one's going to come back. There's a holding flag down just two yards beyond the line of scrimmage, and it was a wide receiver, Trevin Baxter, on the back side that was just trying to make a play for Barraza, who did a nice job breaking tackles and making something happen. It was Ben Burkholder in the backfield for Pandora, but like I said, this one's going to come back. Yeah. Of great pressure there, <laughs> nearly a tackle for loss for the Rockets. Instead, Barraza able to bust out of it. But as Evan said, it'll go back into negative territory for the Bulldogs. So the ball be spotted about the 47-yard line, and that will make things a little more difficult on the Grove offense here in this opening drive. That's always a tough one, too. That one was behind the play a little bit, kind of after the ball carrier had passed that area of the field. And so not really a penalty. Well, you never want to take a penalty, but certainly that time, not a, not a penalty you wanted to take. Yeah, this first quarter tonight brought to you by Citizens National Bank. See how we're building businesses one relationship at a time at CNBOhio. 
Baxter.com. Baxter in motion. They'll pitch to Barraza. Has some room to run. Back to the original line of scrimmage. Shoved out at the 44-yard line. 43, they'll mark. Two plays in a row. Columbus Grove trying to get Barraza outside. He's got wheels. He's a playmaker. And if you get him into space, he's going to do some dangerous things. That time, he got right behind the big number seven, Brady Basinger. And he was able to get up for a, a nice 12-yard pickup. Trenton Barraza, like Landon Best, a first-team All-Northwest Conference performer a season ago. As he'll stand behind Best in the shotgun. In the pistol, there's Basinger lined up as the wing to the bottom of your screen. Nearly got the Grove PG Rocket defense to jump and did. Alex Runchilling on the far side there, just getting ahead of the play. And you talk about Barraza, you know, 127 yards per game last season. A great ball carrier, as you said, maybe one of the top backs in the state of Ohio. Last year, Pandora only held him to 70 yeah. yards on the ground doing a nice job tackling, doing a nice job containing him. Two wide receivers to the left, one to the right, 10.55 to go. And we've got Pandora Gilboa asking for a timeout. Looks like they're missing a down lineman. There's only three down linemen. I'm not sure why the referees have allowed the play yeah. to stop there. So they'll get an extra player on it was 11 versus 10. Maybe an equipment issue that would be the only reason the referees yeah. would stop play without a timeout call. So best to the gun, fakes the handoff, will sling it to Baxter with a wide open lane, will angle to the far sideline, Baxter in a race for the end zone, and he'll win it. A 38-yard touchdown pass from Landon Best to Trevin Baxter. It's Columbus Grove on the scoreboard with the Northwest Ohio Recycling Touchdown. Love that play from the Bulldogs right there. Just a fake to the right side. Little play action gets the linebackers, gets a couple of the secondary going to the left, and then they throw back to that side, and they run right through the vacant area of the field. What a fantastic play and a fantastic score early on here from the Bulldogs. Evan Verhoff will come on to kick the extra point for Columbus Grove. Last year, Baxter only three catches for 63 yards and a touchdown, so that's a big one there. Yeah, two catches the on year. the first drive. That's right. The kick is through the uprights and good, and Columbus Grove has a 7-0 lead over Pandora Gilboa early in the first quarter. We'll come back with more first quarter action coming up here on WOSN. Tonight's broadcast brought to you in part by Dale's Concrete. Call Dale's Concrete and decorative stamping and lipstick for all your commercial and residential concrete needs. 7-0 Columbus Grove on the opening touchdown drive. As they'll now send it away as Evan Verhoff will do the honors. And Pandora Yoboa itching to get their hands on that football where they, they want to be balanced this year. And they've it's something that they haven't necessarily had the last couple of years when they've been able to sling it. They've slung it when they've had 1,000-yard rushers, a couple of them. They've done that too, Evan. Yeah, no question. We're going to see a heavy dose of Andrew Miller in this one, 162 carries last year, over 1,000 yards. And so we'll see what they can do. Like you said, they want to keep it balanced, but they're going to have to be careful too. They gave up seven points early. If they can keep it balanced here, that's fine. But you start to fall behind by a couple scores, and they're going to pull you out of that game plan quickly. So this is a big drive for Pandora. Lane Lee carries the return out to just shy of the 25-yard line, and that's where the Rocket offense, triggered by Corey Girton, will get started with 10.38 to go on the Sprunger Insurance scoreboard here in the first quarter. The offensive line, like for Pandora Gabola, like Grove, Forge seniors and a junior from left to right, Logan Moser, Eli Luganbill, center Trevin Tressel Grothaus, Anthony Gersh shoots at right guard, and Parker Gillespie at right tackle as they'll hand off to Andrew Miller. He'll go off right tackle and picks up a gain of about two on that first down. Well, again, if you want to be balanced, you're going to have to establish the run and the pass. But the run comes first, if you ask me, right? You need to make sure that this defense stays honest, that they bring some guys up, they pack the box, and then you can start to spread the field a little bit right there. Good penetration from the Columbus Grove defensive line. They just brought four, and they were able to wrap him up for a two-yard gain. Corey Girton will be by his lonesome in a shotgun. Three receivers to his left and two to his right with Andrew Miller to the right. He'll turn and fire quickly up the far sideline. It's caught by Lee. He shoved out of bounds, but not until he picks up a Web Insurance Agency first down. We've got a penalty marker down on that far sideline. 
We'll have to see what the penalty is. That was a really nice block from Ben Burkholder on the far side to create that seam. We have a flag down, and I didn't see anything in that area, so we'll have to wait for the referee. I didn't see anything too blatant from our vantage point. Looks like it is going to go against the Pandora Gilboa Rockets, though. It's pointing specifically at Lane Lee. I doubt he committed the penalty. He was the one with the football, but maybe got a stiff arm out there and got a face mask potentially, but that is going back quite a ways. Now you're behind the chains. It was a good little play there, trying to spread the field, get the ball to the outside, but now you need to eat some yardage up on the second and 13. Need to get to the 35-yard line. Pick up a first down as they'll send Miller in motion. Swing it to him, catches it out of the backfield, and he is met immediately by that Columbus Grove defense. Really nice job flying to the ball by, ball by Columbus Grove. And so far, Pandora just trying to keep it simple, right? A, a run and then two swing passes just to, to make sure they're getting the ball forward. But Columbus Grove, a nice job running tough there. Maybe a small gain, but not much as it's third and long. Jamison Raider, I believe, on the tackle for Columbus Grove. Seven said third and long. Here somewhat backed up in their own territory for the Pandora Gilboa Rockets. Girton awaits the snap. Throws to the far side. It's caught, but to the ground immediately was Ben Burkholder. And that looks like it's going to be well shy of the first down marker, and Pandora go bow forced to punt. Well, Garrett, we mentioned how big that drive was. Obviously, it uh, didn't go their way, and now they're going to give the ball back to Columbus Grove. So you talk about big times in games. <laughs> right now, they're going to have to get a stop because you can already start to feel on the road the momentum going toward the home team. It's going to be big. Girton back to punt is the quarterback as well. So something to watch is the Barraza brothers will be back deep to return for the Bulldogs. Ace. We'll get a whistle as the play clock was winding down. Well, it's week one, and everyone's still trying to get things sorted out. And this time, just too many guys on the field, so they'll back it up five yards. Not what you want to see when you're already somewhat backed up in your own territory. Pandora Gilboa not going to be able to pick up that web insurance agency first down. So fourth and 13 now for the Rockets. And they, just like they did on the kickoff, probably try to keep it away from Trenton Barraza. And now they'll make it. That's the only option back deep to return as Barraza will go to the far sideline, pick it up at the 44-yard line. Tries to get past one defender, is able to do it. Now it's spun down at the 40-yard line. Great kickoff coverage there by the Pandora Gilboa Rocket Special Teams unit. Yeah, great coverage, but a really nice punt right there from Gerson. Absolutely. Nice spiraling kick. was nice and high, so gave his coverage team some time to get down the field, and they did a nice job staying put, right? A lot of times you'll see teams try to chase the ball carrier, but right there they stayed in their lanes, they kept wide, and they were able to keep Barraza inside. 8.21 to go here in the first quarter on the Sprunger Insurance scoreboard, and Columbus Grove will get back to work. Quite efficient in their first drive. Touchdown pass from Landon Best to Trevin Baxter, 38 yards. And Columbus Grove, who has a spectacular running back, did a lot of damage through the air. As Best has Barraza behind him in the pistol. He'll hand it off, Barraza up the middle. Tried to slip past the tackler, couldn't. Is tugged to the turf by Andrew Miller. Well, they like to go to the outside with Barraza, but hey, every now and then they'll go up the middle again to keep the defense honest, right? You can't commit too much to the outside when you know that he can come right up the middle. So a good job here mixing things up and Columbus Grove being, like you said, very efficient. So a gain of seven there on first down. Got just past the 45-yard line. Barraza riding sidecar with Best in the gun. They'll fake the handoff. Best wanted to pump and go deep and is now brought to the turf. The Rockets bring down Landon Best. One might believe he's got the football. It's pulled off the pile, which C is that. I think it was Mays that jumped in there and, and pulled a guy off of his quarterback. And yeah, there's nothing really in that, but a nice job pen uh, penetrating right there by Pandora. 
making best pull that ball down. He wanted to go deep down the right side and had a man. And Caden Smith credited with the sack for Pandora Gilboa. As Bess will stand in the pistol and hands off to Barraza. Slips through the defender and runs to the near side. Barraza has one man to beat, shoved out of bounds inside the 30-yard line. A touchdown saving tackle made by Corey Girton, but another first down from the Web Insurance Agency. First down for Columbus Grove. A hold the size of a Texas on the left side of that line right there. They just keep it simple on third down. Just send it right up the left side and good blocking and a good burst from the athlete Barraza. Columbus Grove back quickly on to football. Two receivers to the left as Barraza gets the rock one more time. Will go to the far side. Is stood up into the 20-yard line. And that's where he's dropped. So again, still about five yards. Bulldogs will take this all day. Three, four, five yards per play. That's a recipe for success as we're already about halfway, oh, a little over halfway through this first quarter. Those numbers ticking off the Sprunger Insurance Agency scoreboard. Yes, best will look to the sidelines to get more instructions from Grove head coach Andy Schaefer in his 13th season leading the Bulldogs. Time flies when you're winning games. My goodness, 13 years for Coach Schaefer. Barraza tries to slip past one defender, can't do it. A great play made by Eli Luganville in the interior of that PG line, and he'll make the stop for no gain. Good job by Luganville staying low right there, getting leverage. And Able to get into the backfield to grab Barraza before he could get too much. Yeah, Evan, you talked about winning games, time flies. Uh, Trent Barraza, it feels like. Good you know, gracious. <laughs> but also, he talked about, you know, hey, our expectation is, and it's not going to be popular, but our expectation is we want to play Marion Local in the state semifinals come the week of Thanksgiving. And they're in Division 7, Region 26 this year, dropping down from Division 20, from Division 6. As Barra, or I beg your pardon, Best waits the snap and hands it. Keeps it himself, actually, and spins out of a tackler. Keeps going. Best inside the five-yard line is tugged to the turf. Nearly scored a touchdown. As I don't know that Best even knew where the football was for a hot second there. <laughs> as Tanner Bott makes the touchdown-saving tackle for the Rockets. Well, I hate to be Captain Obvious here, but you got to wrap up and you got to bring the guy down. He's not huge. Now, he's very strong and he's an athlete, don't get me wrong, but you got to bring him down right there. Best able to bounce off of a couple tacklers and drag another one really close to that goal line. Looks like they're down at the two-yard line. Grove looking for their Northwest Ohio recycling, second Northwest Ohio recycling touchdown of the evening. And Sparaza will line up behind Best in the gun. Two receivers bunched to the left as... Best will roll, looking to throw, trying to sprint past the defense, is able to waltz into the far corner of the end zone. A two-yard touchdown run for Landon Best makes it 13-0 Bulldogs. And there you see that athleticism I just talked about. Takes off on a designed run, the, the first play, and then that play right there just rolls out, looking for a guy to th throw it to, can't find anyone, and does it with every good quarterback should. Tucks it away, runs into the end zone. Touchdown stamp brought to you by Northwest Ohio Recycling in Pandora, paying top dollar for aluminum, copper, brass, scrap iron, and scrap cars. Call 419-384-3392. Extra point from Verhoff through the uprights and good, and it is a 14-0 lead for Columbus Grove. Here with 4.51 to go on the Sprunger Insurance scoreboard. We'll step aside, more first quarter action coming up here on WOSN. Scoreboard tonight brought to you by Sprunger Insurance with locations in Pandora and Bluffton. They are saying go Rockets. Go Rockets going on offense now as Evan Verhoff will kick it away for the home team. Sends it to the far sideline, making a running grab is Lane Lee. And he'll avoid one defender. Can't avoid the second, however, and quite wisely goes down. Chase Meyer, I beg your pardon on the return. That's really good coverage, too, because that kick was relatively short, and he caught it on the run, but ultimately only able to get about five yards. So good coverage by Columbus Grove, and still not great field position for Pandora starting out. Rockets looking to, despite winning last year, change their fortune in the series a little bit. Lost three of the last five to Columbus Grove. As Corey Gurton will send the offense back out. He'll stand in the pistol with Burkholder to his right and Miller behind him. 
as Girton will hand off. Tried to hurdle a defender. Did the carry, carrier, Andrew Miller, who Matt Hershey said he's going to be one of the best running backs in the area. Like to get him rolling here early in this first quarter. I believe it. He's a great athlete, but right there, nowhere to go. You can have all the athleticism in the world, but they don't give you any space. You're not going to go anywhere. And a good job that time by Levi Schrader on the left side, just breaking down like a good defensive end does or a good outside linebacker does, and he's able to bring him down no problem. Gain of about half a yard, if that, on first down. Brings up second and ten, and the Rockets will remain with two backs on the each hip of Corey Girton, the 5'11", 165-pound junior. Call on the signals for, for Pandora Gilboa. He'll try to fire a corner out, tipped. Great play defensively by Aiden Patrick. Read it all the way and got his fingertips on it to bring up third and long. Yeah, just trying to drop it in a small space right there and almost got there, but you're right, a really good play by Aiden Patrick. That could have been a big play for Pandora, but now a third and long, and again, they really need to get something going here. They get the ball back to Grove. We're really looking at a, a dangerous territory yes. early on. Third and long as the Rockets went three and out the last drive, trying to avoid it here in drive number two. Girton will stand on the gun. Miller to his left. Send Lee in motion. As Girton will sling it to Lee out of the backfield. Two defenders right there able to power through him, but did not get enough for that Web Insurance Agency first down. It's going to be fourth and about four. Bulldogs have done a really nice job sniffing out at all these kind of simpler plays for, for the Rockets, right? They tried a deep pass on the last one, but so far they've really kept it to the ground. They've kept it just kind of to the outside, trying to get their guys into space. And Columbus Grove doing a nice job, number one, flying to the ball, but number two, making nice tackles and bringing guys down the first try. Curtin back on to punt once more. Baxter and Barraza back deep to return for the Bulldogs. Last punt they had. Baxter sprint up the field to make sure Barraza was the one who got the football, and they'll just boot it up the far sideline and out of bounds just past the 50-yard line. Well, that one not quite as nice as the first one, but still a good job keeping it away from these dynamic returners, just kicking it out of bounds. But work to do for Pandora. Right now, it's kind of gut check time. You've got to figure out who you are early on in the season. You've got to get a stop here and get that ball back. Yeah, and Matt Hershey told us, hey, anytime we can beat Columbus Grove, it's going to set the tone for the season. And it's an important rivalry game, not only as kind of a measuring stick that you know Columbus Grove has big aspirations for this season, but also to see where you are here early in the year. Yeah, no question. And it's a Thursday night, right? Everyone's kind of paying attention to a game like this. Yeah. There's only about two or three in our area. Glad that WOSN could cover a couple of them. And uh, you're absolutely right. Everyone's watching, and uh, they want to know what these two teams are all about. So Columbus Grove will go back to work at their own 47-yard line. Best starting field position of the night for the Bulldogs. Next best will stand in the pistol. They saw something they liked. They looked over to Schaefer. They changed the play, or at least made an adjustment here. Hand off to Barraza. Up the middle, across the midfield strike. Cut down just shy of a 45. Nice gain there on first down. I, I said it on the last drive for Columbus Grove, but if they can continue to just pound away, just eat up some yardage right there, six plays on or six yards on first down, maybe even seven. Uh, it, this is just a, a clinic right now. I know it's just the first quarter, but they look really good. Efficiency, the name of the game early on. Second and short, about a long three, we'll call it. As Barraza stands to the left, a best in the gun. Two wide receivers to the left. Tight end and wide receiver to the right in the Bulldog formation. They'll fake the handoff, throw it to Baxter. Has one touchdown on the evening. Stiff arms, one defender. Down the 30, cut out of bounds by Ben Burkholder. But another big play by Trevin Baxter. Yeah, looking good. Has the touchdown catch from earlier, and then a nice job right there with the catch, the yards after catch, and a nice stiff arm to get a few extra yards at the end. So the ball marked at the 25-yard line. Bulldogs knocking at the red zone after picking up another Web Insurance Agency first down. Columbus Grove talked about in the preseason they need to understand the importance of early season games. I think they've shown that they have the understanding here in this first quarter. So they'll send a man in motion. Pitch to Barraza. Has a lead blocker and is upended 
by Lane Lee, who fought off that blocker. Great defensive play there by the Grove, by the PG senior. Garrett, earlier you said that Coach Hershey has said a win against Grove will set the tone for the season, right? Well, if you think about it, on the other side, Columbus Grove probably feels the same way. Last year, they lost this game. They actually started the season one and two before rattling off all those victories and ultimately winning the Northwest Conference. And so they lost that game, and it took a little bit to get the wheels going after that. So a, a big win here for Columbus Grove would certainly set the, the tone for a season in which you said they have really high expectations. Second and four for the Bulldogs. Another carry for Barraza. Slips through the... Oh, fumbled the football, and it's recovered by Pandora Gilboa inside the five-yard line. And they say it was a live fumble and a big turnover there for the Rockets. Yeah, first carry of the night there for Grant Eversole, and it looked like he had a, a pretty good game, but obviously the ball came out, and a good job being heads up by that secondary for the Rockets as they're able to fall on top of it. So a good job at least getting the ball back. Now they've got some work to do way deep in their own end. Yeah, no, uh, even just getting that turnover, even if it just stops Columbus Grove from going up 20 nothing in the first quarter. It feels is, good. It's going to do wonders for the Rockets' motivation here. As depth has been a concern for Pandora Gilboa. They said, you know, we are, we are worried about depth. A lot of guys going both ways for the Rockets, as we'll see if they can get a break here at the end of this first quarter. As Curtin will look to fire from his own end zone, going down the near sideline. A collision ball kicked into the air, nearly grabbed by Nate Walker. <laughs> what a wild Circus. bounce. Well, that was a cool-looking play right there, but good coverage again down the side for Columbus Grove. This secondary has done a nice job, but what's happening is this defensive line is doing a nice job holding their own. It's, yeah. it's, it's a four-man four front. They're doing a nice job holding their own, and they're, they're enabling the secondary to kind of sag back and, and honor the pass. And so good coverage there, knocking that ball away. You know what? Truthfully, I like the idea of going deep there because when you're backed up inside, I mean, they're, they're on their own one-yard line. <laughs> Everybody thinks we're going to run it right up the gut, try to get out of here. Chuck it a country mile and see if somebody goes and gets it. They're empty here. Girton looking to throw one more time. We'll fire. It's caught by Chase Meyer. Tries to slip out of a tackle. He's tugged to the turf by his shoestrings. By Aiden Patrick, the 5'9", 170-pound senior for Columbus Grove. But third and five upcoming as the numbers tick down on the Sprunger Insurance scoreboard. Again, just kind of a simple play that they're able to convert and complete, but Columbus Grove right there on top of them, bringing them down. No yards after catch. Curtin in the shotgun by himself one more time. Pivotal third down for the Rockets. Looks to fire, throws. It's caught by Meyer, and he is going to be right at the Web Insurance Agency first down marker. It is the first first down of the evening for the Rockets. It's a good throw right there from Girton on the out route. Uh, hit his guy perfectly in stride, able to get that first down. You know, Corey Girton, he, he's a fantastic quarterback. A starter last year as a sophomore. He threw for 2,421 yards, 28 touchdowns, 15 interceptions. The year before that, he ended up starting most of his freshman year after the starting quarterback went out with an injury. So this is a guy, yes, he's just a junior, but he has a lot of experience and a nice arm. Send Basinger in motion, hand off to Miller. Tries to power through a defender, does. Got out to the probably 18-yard line or so, and that will be the final play of the first quarter. The Sprunger Insurance scoreboard says Columbus Grove 14, Pandora Gaboa nothing. We'll come back with second quarter action for you coming up on WOSN. Tonight's second quarter brought to you by Citizens National Bank. See how they're building businesses one relationship at a time at cnbohio.com. Second and seven. Backed up in their own territory for the Rockets. As Girton will hand off to Miller. Goes off left tackle. Spins around out to about the 20-yard line. Miller with the run on the play. To make it third and relatively short for Pandora Gilboa. Well, you said third Coach down, Hershey down, mentioned Andrew Rockets. Miller could be one of the best running backs in the area, and I, I agree. Andrew Miller, a guy that possesses both strength and speed, uh, a combination that's obviously deadly. And the last two plays, the one right before the quarter end and that one there, you could see not, not a big pickup, but he was carrying guys, right? You could yep, see him running absolutely. right through that line. Uh, and I'm looking forward to watching him work throughout this year, his senior year. 
Girton. Empty backfield. Looks. Slings it to Lee. It's caught for a Web Insurance Agency first down. Moving the chains one more time. This is by far the best drive of the night for the Rockets. Well, the, the first couple passes we saw go downfield were kind of over the top. They were long. They were 30, 40 yards in the air. Girton's starting to get into a rhythm here, and it's mostly short routes, a little out route, a little slant route there. Uh, really good job by the Rockets adjusting and, and helping their young quarterback get into a rhythm here. Miller will join Girton in the backfield now as three wide receivers go to the top of your screen. On first and 10 from the 27-yard line, Miller in motion. They'll sling it to him one more time, just a little out in front of him. And the pass is incomplete. Trying to leverage the wheels of Miller right there, getting him into space, but that pass just a little bit low. To really step into those and make sure you're throwing through the, the target. So that stops the clock. Second and 10 upcoming. Columbus Grove. Said defensively, they gotta, gotta get off the field. They did that on the first two drives. Pandora Gilbo has picked up a pair of third down conversions here on this one. Now faced second and second 10. Curtin and Miller in the gun. Yes. We get a penalty flag and delay a game as the play clock just struck zero before Girton got the snap off. Well, and you can see Girton almost before that snap came, he started to fall backward as if he expected it to come sooner. The ball just didn't come. So another tough penalty there, backing up five, second and 15 here. So that will back him up just a little bit. Trestle Grothaus, the junior, starting center for Pandora Gilboa, the only junior on that offensive line. Four seniors up front for the Rockets which probably bodes well for their success in 2024. Well, you know, normally a small roster, but always some big guys up front for the Rockets. Always fun to watch. Girton, the chest high snap, pressured. Will sling it to Miller on the screen. Able to blow through Trevin Baxter right at the first down marker. A great call there by Pandora Gilboa as Columbus Grove blitzed a little bit. Got Miller wide open for the Another Web Insurance Agency first down. Yeah, nice little swing pass there. And really good job getting some guys out in front of Miller to block. And a Miller, a nice job staying behind them and finding those lanes for that first down. Really nice play. Third first down picked up on this drive by the Rockets. So visitors putting together a little march here as a whistle and a false start called against Pandora Yomoa. So uh, another tough penalty here on this drive that able to convert the last penalty, but now first and 15 for Pandora Yomoa. Yeah, it looked like a receiver on the far side there too that jumped and, and you know, it's, it happens. Offside yep. happens, false starts happen, but when a wide receiver does it, it's extra frustrating because those guys are just supposed to watch the ball, right? Just wait till the ball moves and then you can go. 10.05 to go here in the second quarter on the Sprunger Insurance scoreboard. As Girton will be by himself in the gun. So he awaits the snap. Looks right, fires a little high, nearly intercepted. As Aiden Patrick on the coverage, I beg your pardon. Grant Eversoll over there on the coverage. Tough to tell from our angle, that ball almost looked behind Meyer. And what it seemed like is maybe he turned to the outside on a hook route, and Girton expected him to turn to the inside, and that ball just a little bit to his right. Either way, a little miscommunication. Still behind the sticks here on a long second down because of that penalty. Ball on their own 33-yard line. Started the drive at their own one-yard line. As Girton, as Miller to his left. Looking. Will fire it downfield. A diving attempt made by Ben Burkholder, but just couldn't corral. And good sportsmanship there by Columbus Grove's Levi Schrader to help him up after the play. Really good effort from Burkholder right there. Had a little bit of space down the left side. And I like what Girton did there. Obviously not quite as accurate as he would have liked, but instead of floating it up and letting the Columbus Grove defense have time to come knock that ball away, he threw it nice and hard, trying to get it to Burkholder quickly, but alas, incomplete. Third and long here for the visitors. Two wide receivers split out wide to each side as Miller will join Girton in the gun. A look to throw. Burke Holder on the screen makes the catch, but he is immediately surrounded by Bulldogs. There's Kylan Mays in on the tackle, as was Luke Groach. 
And that will look like the end of the line for the Rockets. A really good heads up play by Mays right there. Often on a screen, what happens is that the offensive line will at least hit the defensive line once or twice and then release. What ends up happening, usually the defensive line thinks, ooh, free shot at the quarterback, I'm gonna go. Right there, Mays recognized it was gonna be a screen. He just backed off a little bit, waited for the ball carrier to get into him. Really nice job. So after picking up three web insurance agency first downs, Pandora Gilbo forced to punt, catches it off the bounce, did Girton, and punts it to the near sideline as Barraza will pick it up and spins out of a tackle and is wrapped up and brought to the turf by Landon Moore. And he will go no further. Barraza stopped the 41 yard line. I guarantee you Barraza's never seen a ball laying on the ground live that he hasn't <laughs> thought, I can pick this up and score. Yep, on. no, he's that dynamic of an athlete. And, uh, just sitting there waiting on it, thinking, uh, do I want Do I want to do this? <laughs> yes, I looking do. Up, do I have space? Do I have space? And yep, just enough. So the sun starts to set here at Climber Stadium. 9.04 to go, second quarter, 14-0 Columbus Grove after a Landon Best two-yard touchdown run and a Trevin Baxter 38-yard touchdown catch on the first drive of the night for the Bulldogs. They'll go back to work as Barraza stands behind Best in the pistol. Barraza the handoff. Got out to the 48-yard line before he's tackled. Good patience on that one from Barraza as he kind of tiptoed his way up to the line of scrimmage. And then once he saw the seam or the crease, put his foot in the ground and got up for a nice game. Tackle made by Landon Moore. Second and five. Now facing the home squad. Big crowd on hand tonight on a Thursday night to open the high school football season. Not a far trip for Pandora Gilbo. Barraza and Basinger to the right of Best in the gun. They'll send Baxter in motion. That is a lot of bees. <laughs> we will get a timeout called by the Columbus Grove Bulldogs. We'll step aside as well. 8.27 to go in the second quarter here on WOSN. Tonight's instant replay is brought to you by Hawker Drywall and Plastering. Visit them at hawkerdrywall.com to see how they can help you. Second and five for the Bulldogs. Approaching midfield as Best will hand off to Bar Bar No, Best will keep it himself. Comes to the near side and a swarm of PG Rockets as Landon Moore thought he had his hands on the football is still holding on for dear life. As the Rockets push Landon Best backwards. Yeah, really nice job by the left side of that defense. Keying on the quarterback, waiting to see if he kept the football. And as soon as they realized he did, a nice job grabbing him, bringing him down. And it sets up a third and about four. Looking for that Web Insurance Agency first down here. As the clock continues to tick under eight minutes to go in the second quarter. They end up with a really good spot there on the forward progression, too. I didn't really realize how far up the field he got. Best awaits the shotgun snap from Ty Meyer. Send a man in motion, fake the handoff to him. Best time to throw, hit as he fires. Barraza can't get it on the fingertips. And Pandora Gilboa forces a fourth down here. We'll see what Columbus Grove does. Well, this defense, Columbus Grove's defense, has done a really nice job all night. So I don't know if Coach Schaefer would really hate giving the ball back at midfield, but it looks like he's bringing the punt unit on anyway. Trevin Baxter. Will drop back deep to punt for the Bulldogs. As Chase Meyer steps back deep to return. 7.35 to go here in the second quarter. They're still working on getting guys in the right spot are the Rockets. Baxter jumps to catch. A high spiraling kick. And it'll be avoided by Meyer. Takes a Columbus Grove bounce. Deep to the near the five yard line, maybe about the six yard line. And that is where the Rockets will go to work for their fourth time tonight here in this first half of this rivalry matchup. They just cannot start a possession in good field position, huh? That last possession started after the fumble where they got it on the one yard line. And now here, punt down to the six yard line. Really good job by Columbus Grove on the punt. Now the Rockets still with work to do, but they did get a couple stops. They have kept it to a 14-point game. They should start to feel a little more confidence, and so we'll see what happens here on this offensive drive. Yeah, Matt Hershey said that we have to believe in our ability. 
we have to believe that just because we're going to Columbus Grove doesn't mean that they're better than us or we're at a disadvantage. And I, I think they've started to build that confidence here in the late stages of the first and early stages of the second quarter as a straight T backfield behind Girton is Ben Burkholder gets the carry with a gain about four on the carry. Nice job by Gavin Barraza coming up to make that tackle from the cornerback position. Let's see if Pandora Gaboa goes back. Goes back to that straight T backfield behind Girton. He'll hand off to Miller. Looking for some room on the right side. We'll cut it up across the 10 yard line. Oh, a gain of about two. Yeah, they just pick up a couple on that on that one. Brings up a third and, and somewhat manageable. Third and five. They'll go right back quickly. Up under center with that straight T backfield. And they get a false start committed by an offensive lineman. And it'll push them right backwards. And they really have shot themselves in the foot too, right? You're not starting in good field position. You're also giving up some silly penalties. We saw a delay of game. We saw this false start. That pushes them back and makes a third and manageable, third and long, and really tough going for the Rockets, still trying to get organized in some of their plays as well, some of their formations. Yeah, just trying to itch to get a little bit momentum built up here in this first quarter, the second quarter, I beg your pardon. So we hit the midway point on the Sprunger Insurance Agency scoreboard. So with 30 and 10 now facing the visitors, Girton will step back and await the snap. Looks, fires to the far side, it's intercepted by Gavin Barraza. Inside the 10, inside the 5, spun down in a big interception by the junior. Puts Columbus Grove in fantastic field position. Yeah, just miscommunication there. Not sure if it was the wide receiver running the wrong route or Corey Girton throwing it to the wrong spot. But either way, his receiver was running down the field as that ball was thrown behind him. And Barraza just kind of like this fielding a punt, yep. grabs that ball. And fortunately, there's some rockets there to bring him down. But, jeez. 5.55 to go here in the second quarter. 14-0. Instead of trying to stop a Northwest Ohio recycling, or I beg your pardon, a web insurance agency first down. Columbus Grove now looking at scoring a Northwest Ohio recycling touchdown. Best in Barraza. And a gun. Ball on the one-yard line. Best will keep it himself off the left side. Did he get in the end zone? He did. Touchdown. The second touchdown run of the night for Landon Best. That Northwest Ohio recycling touchdown makes it 20, nothing Columbus Grove. Yeah, why not? You just keep the ball on the ground behind the, that offensive line that's done a, done a nice job tonight. Controlling the line of scrimmage, getting a push, and not much space there, but they only needed a yard, and Best did a nice job finding that sliver of space. So two touchdown runs for Landon Best. First team All-Northwest Conference performer as a sophomore starting where he left off last year. And the extra point from Evan Verhoff is through the uprights and good. 21-0 on the Sprunger Insurance scoreboard. 5.49 to go in the second quarter here on WOSN. Tonight's game brought to you in part by Dale's Concrete and Decorative Stamping in Lipsick for all your commercial and residential concrete needs. 21-0 Grove. Giving the football back to Pandora Yoboa as a short squibber. Scooped up by the Rockets on the far side. A little bit of room to run before a collision about the 25-yard line. I might be wrong, but I think this is the best starting position for a possession for Pandora Gilboa. If it's not, it's awful close. <laughs> As the Rockets have put together a little bit of work offensively, a little bit of momentum. As Girton will be by his lonesome at a gun. See what the sense of urgency is here for Pandora Gilboa. Trailing by three scores is Girton. Fires up the far sideline, made the catch on the far side. Is believe it's Ben Burkholder. 
No, it's Nate Walker, actually. I beg your pardon. 21, 12, it's all the same. Nate Walker, the 5'10 junior. A big first down catch there, moving the Web Insurance Agency chains. And they're on Columbus Grove's side of the field as well. That's got to feel good. A little momentum here. Into Grove territory for the first time. Here's Curtin back of the gun. We'll look to the near side. Let's it fly. It's caught by Lane Lee. And he stood up as Gavin Barraza makes a tackle. Levi Schrader in on the stop as well. But another positive gain for the Rockets. Yep, good first down play. Five yards. And start stringing these together, you really start to feel that momentum and you really start to gain confidence, which will be big going into the locker room before halftime. Under five minutes to go on the Sprunger Insurance Agency scoreboard. Here in this first half, 21-0 Grove. Gurton awaits a snap. Looks left, lets it go. It bounced in front of Gavin Barraza and he had to get rid of it or he was going to take a lick. Yeah, I would imagine the pressure played a part in that incompletion. It's another one that kind of looked like the play he threw a pick earlier where he, he had a guy that kind of went to the inside instead of the outside and the ball thrown behind him. It's a replay tonight brought to you by Hawker Drywall and Plastering. Visit them at hawkerdrywall.com to see how they can help you. Big third down here for both sides. Grove wants to get off the field. Rockets want to move the chains, keep the drive alive. Third and four, ball to 40-yard line. Girton will fire a slant across the middle, looking for Lee, incomplete. And that'll bring up fourth and five. Rockets might be forced to go for it here, trailing by 21. Right there, it kind of seemed like Girton was in between making a decision, and he just didn't put a lot behind that ball. He's he just not really stepping through. He's not really planting, just not really throwing hard. I can't tell if it's indecision or if uh, he's just a little afraid out there. But either way, he's got to step through those passes. He's got some open men, and we've seen him throw a good ball. Fourth and four. Might try to get Columbus Grove to jump here. Five seconds on the play clock. And he'll take a step back and punt it. Oh, thought about punting it. Instead, forced to come to the near side. Read the defense, has to get to the 35. Didn't get there, I don't believe. Well, it's it can't be, close. It it can't be like the clock one, it. and it's either out of bounds or a first down. So it, it's going to be first very down. close. And they're going to call it a first down. A heads-up play. Gurton took a step back to punt on the quick punt, so the Bulldogs didn't have a returner. Saw him bail and said, I'm going to try to get there myself. Sometimes you have to do whatever it takes. Really nice job there, just pulling it down and running and just getting to that line to gain. Got that Web Insurance Agency first down. So we approach four minutes to go here in the first half. Curtin fakes the handoff to Miller. Looking to the near side. We'll let it fly into double coverage. It's intercepted. It is intercepted by Trevin Baxter. Got the interception. What a grab by Baxter right there as he jumps up. Able to pull it down just in bounds, too. He bobbled it on his way down, and Coach Hershey's asking if maybe when he got possession he was touching the sideline, which would mean incomplete. But the referee right on it says, nope, turnover. Columbus Grove will take it back. So the second consecutive drive that ends in an interception for the Rockets. And Columbus Grove with 3.53 to go and a pair of least famous recipe chicken timeouts in their pocket. We'll have some time and space to work with, trying to advance that lead here in a second. The passing game hasn't been super active, but it certainly can be. So we'll see if Best opens up a little bit with 3.53 left. Best with Barraza to his left. See if Columbus Grove takes a shot here. Baxter in motion. He'll take the handoff. He is stung in the backfield. My goodness gracious. Andrew Miller stands him up in the backfield. Really nice job getting into the backfield, but also delivering a really nice hit. Drops him back for a loss of about eight yards, it looks like. They'll mark him back seven officially, so second and 17 here. Now ben Burkholder actually on the tackle. A great stick there on first down. Brings up second and long inside their own 10-yard line. 
Barraza, the handoff. Bounces it outside. Spins forward to the seven or eight yard line. It will be third and long upcoming here for Columbus Grove. Two runs and a third and 15. You don't want to make a mistake this deep in your own end, so it might end up keeping it on the ground here. In order to just make sure they don't make a mistake and either let the clock keep ticking or force Pandora to take a timeout. Did get a whistle. So we have and an injured player. We do have an injury on that far sideline. We'll step aside as well. 2.49 to go here in this second quarter. More second quarter action coming up here on WOSN. Time out tonight brought to you by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken. Home style happens here. And it looks like we might have a Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken timeout called by Pandora Gilboa. So we'll keep it here. 2.49 to go, and Pandora Gabo wants to make sure they get this right, Evan. It's third and 15. They've got to get off the field, especially with Grove backed up as far as they are. Yeah, no question. And, and hey, if you can force a punt right here, you have some pretty good field position in a game where you, obviously you're down 21, but you still have probably two minutes or so left by the time you get the ball back. So this is absolutely a big down for a team that, hey, we haven't really talked about this yet, but two of their best players from last year and from the last couple of years, Aiden Morris and Colin Harris, both graduating and, and two big shoes to fill. I know Colin Harris injured for most of the year last year, but Aiden Morris, the guy that caught the touchdown pass, all BBC performer a year ago. And so we've seen it so far in the first half. They're really relying heavily on Ben Burkholder and Andrew Miller to carry the load. And obviously they want their junior quarterback to, to be able to lead the offense as well. And uh, it's a tough defense they're going against, but we've seen stretches where they complete, make completion after completion. They string some stuff together, but then those possessions have just ended in a mistake or an interception that things just not going the Rockets way. So yes, halftime coming. Yes, some work to do before then, but some adjustments definitely need to be made at halftime. Third and long here for Columbus Grove. Ball in their own seven yard line. 2.49 to go here on the first half. Burkholder back in after coming off the field. Looks like we got 12 players on Pandora Gilboa. Pandora. Side of the defense here, and they take another least famous recipe chicken timeout. They have got 12 silver hats on the field out of the timeout, which you saw the frustration on Matt Hershey's face. And was not thrilled that they had 12 guys on the field coming out of the timeout. And Garrett, I hate to be the guy that corrects you. There's only 11 on the field. And so it might have <laughs> been just a, a matter of being in the wrong spot because it's not a matter. It, they have... 11 guys out there. Yes, one's running off now, but he wasn't on the field before. Yeah, they just came screaming, screaming down the sideline, shouting timeout, timeout, yeah. 12, 12, 12. So maybe took an unneeded least famous recipe chicken timeout there. But still, it's important that they, they get off the field here on third and 15. Well, you can't take them with you, right? You only have 249 left, so you can use one there. Obviously, you want to save them if you can for the offensive possession. But yeah, sure, you have them. Make sure you, you have the personnel right. Make this stop on third, third and down. Third down. It would really bite them in the butt if they give up a first down. Absolutely. They're still trying to get organized. As Barraza goes in motion to the far side. Best looking for Barraza. Downfield has the first down. Or I beg your pardon, is that... Brady Basinger, it is. A sophomore tight end, a big target. Just down the seam and a nice pitch and catch. Put it right into their hands. And again, right before the play, the Rockets just couldn't get organized, couldn't figure out what they were trying to do. And now, here we go with Columbus Grove in the no huddle. Moving quickly. They'll fake the handoff. Best will keep it himself with an avenue to run to the 40-yard line. Very close to another web insurance agency first down. Going to be about a yard shy. As the clock continues to tick, nearing two minutes on the Sprunger Insurance scoreboard. Good read option that time by Best. He kept the ball right in the runner's belly until the defender made a, a choice, and then he pulls it out and runs right up the middle. Best takes the snap, hands off to Barraza, running off the left tackle. Out past the midfield strike for another Webb Insurance Agency first down. 
It's always fun when you're in the hurry-up offense, but you can hand the ball off and get a big chunk of yards whenever you want. Nice run there, and a good job by the left side of that offensive line, creating space. Bulldogs back quickly to the line of scrimmage, under two to go. So they'll send a man in motion, fake the pitch to Barraza. Going deep, best, looking deep, has a man wide open, Kyle Hopkins inside the 10-yard line, and the Bulldogs are in business once more. And they call Hop, 30 catches, 432 yards, six touchdowns last year. Right there, gets in behind the defense. Best underthrew him just a little bit, maybe could have been a touchdown, but either way, a nice job by the quarterback finding his man open behind the defense, a big play, and down now inside the 10-yard line. At the six to be specific, so first and goal for the Bulldogs, leading 21-0, looking to advance that on the Sprunger Insurance scoreboard. Barraza offset behind Best in the pistol. He'll hand it off. Barraza spins out of one tackle. Can't do it a second time as a whole host of Rockets get there with 120 to go. One timeout remaining for Pandora Gilboa. I believe Columbus Grove has two least famous recipe chicken timeouts. That's what I have as well. I don't have two timeouts. <laughs> your assessment is also my assessment. How about I am that, Gary? Not incorrect yet. <laughs> Under a minute to go in this first half. Grove content to watch the numbers tick down. Play clocks are off. So they'll send a man in motion. Fake the handoff, rolling. Looking for Basinger, complete the pass. He's upended, just shy of the goal line with 40 seconds and a least famous recipe chicken timeout taken by the Bulldogs. We'll step aside as well, less than a minute to go. More first half action coming up when we return here on WOSN. First down tonight brought to you by Web Insurance Agency, serving Lima and Allen County for more than 100 years with offices in downtown Lima and Bluffton. Lots of Web Insurance Agency first downs tonight for the Columbus Grove Bulldogs. They're looking for another one, which would be a Northwest Ohio Recycling touchdown. Best. In the gun. Hands off to Barraza. Makes one man miss. Gets across the goal line for a three-yard touchdown run for Trenton Barraza. Bulldogs sure are taking care of business here in the first half. We've said it already, an efficient offense, an offense that gets yard after yard after yard. It seems like every play, I don't have the stats, but five, six, seven yards of play, if not more. And it's been really fun to watch if you're a Columbus Grove fan. At Northwest Ohio Recycling Touchdown, makes it 27-0. Evan Verhoff on for the extra point. The snap is back to hold is down. The kick is up through the uprights and good. Make it 28-0 Columbus Grove on the Sprunger Insurance scoreboard. We'll step aside. 33 seconds to go. See what Pandora Gaboa can do here in the final stages of quarter number two on WOSN. Touchdowns tonight brought to you by Northwest Ohio Recycling and Pandora, paying top dollar for aluminum, copper, brass, scrap iron, and scrap cars. Call 419-384-3392. All the Northwest Ohio Recycling touchdowns so far tonight coming from Columbus Grove. They lead 28-0. Merhoff will chip shot it away. And the Rockets want it to go out of bounds. Just does. It's on the line right now. It is still, you're correct, resting right next to the flag on the sideline. So 33 seconds to go. Rockets don't take any time and will have pretty much by far their best field position of the evening. Doug get started. With one timeout left for Pandora. I can't imagine to try to do anything here, but I've been wrong before. If the Rockets are able to come back tonight, it will break a trend. Each of the last two times they've beaten Columbus Grove, they've scored exactly 25 points. They'll need more than that tonight to grab a W over their heated Route 12 rival. As Girton will step back in a gun. Miller behind him. He'll get the carry. 
Coming to the near side, slips a tackle, comes out to the 40-yard line, cut down just shy of the Web Insurance Agency first down marker. And we'll see if that's the final play of the first half. Appears as if that might be. As Columbus Grove's going to take a 28-0 lead into the halftime break. A pair of touchdown runs by Landon Best, a touchdown pass from Best to Trevin Baxter, and a Trenton Barraza touchdown run gives the Bulldogs a 28-0 lead as we head to the break. We'll step aside, come back. Third quarter action for you coming up when we return here in the season opener on WOSN. Tonight's game brought to you in part by Dale's Concrete and Decorative Stamping in Lipsick for all your commercial, residential, and concrete needs. 28-0 as the second half about to get underway is Evan Verhoff set to boot it away. Quite the light show tonight here in uh, Columbus Grove at Climber Stadium. Got a donation to redo the lights and LEDs. Got them flashing here in the second half. That's a nifty uh, addition to the atmosphere here, Evan. Do they shut it off, Garrett? Uh, that, yeah, that was, oh, yes, yeah, here we go. Yes, okay. Okay. That'd be a fun you know, second you know half, what? just like, under, under the flickering lights. I lost the ball in the lack of light. Like, no, you're, right. you're right. Super cool to see that here in Northwest Ohio. And the boot picked up off the far sideline by Pandora Gilboa's Chase Meyer. He'll take it out to the 30-yard line, and that is where the Rockets will set up shop to begin half Number two this third quarter, brought to you by Citizens National Bank. See how they're building one business relationship at a time at cnbohio.com. Well, we'll see what Pandora can do here coming out. They started to put some things together there in the second quarter, started to complete a couple passes in a row, started to string things together, but ultimately couldn't end up in the end zone. We'll see if Corey Girton can get his confidence back here to start. He'll turn and deliver a ball to Nate Walker along the near sideline. It's caught at the 35, up to the 36, for he's pushed out of bounds by Aiden Patrick. Easy pitch and catch, and trying to maybe build just a little bit of momentum and a little bit of rhythm here to start the second half. Yeah, and those short, quick passes have worked really well for Pandora here today. I like that start to the drive, just a little quick out route, and pick up six, six yards on the play second short it certainly appeared as if Pandora Gabo was at their best when they were in an empty backfield and five wide or four wide receivers and a tight end there in that the end of that first half and maybe Matt Hershey believes that as well as they'll throw it up the seam to looking for Walker one more time couldn't get it off the fingertips is coming to make the coverage was Grant Eversole but uh, a bit of a reach there for Nate Walker trying to corral that football he made that decision quickly almost like he knew exactly where he was going to throw the ball just caught it one step back Throws it up the sideline just out of reach of his man, but we've seen that guy be open down the, the sideline here today. They've completed one on a nice play in the first half, and that time almost had a guy. Curtin buys Lonesome one more time. 11-16 to go here in the third quarter. We'll take the snap, throw across the middle. It's caught by Miller. He's got the Web Insurance Agency first down and a little extra as they approach the 45-yard line. Andrew Miller out of the back, well, out of the tight end slot that time, normally a running back, but can do a lot of things. We've seen him tucked up on that left side of the tackle here in this game and caught some passes last year, 61 yards, a couple touchdowns as well, catching the ball. Yeah, he's a bit of a matchup problem if you line him up at that tight end spot where he's six foot, 215 pounds. He's gonna be a little bigger than maybe some linebackers that'll be matched up with him. Good size to Miller for sure. Three wide receivers to the bottom of the screen as Girton awaits this shotgun snap. He'll chuck it deep, looking down the near sideline. It's thrown out of bounds as Grant Eversole giving chase from the Grove defense. Is Chase Meyer the intended target? It was another one with Girton. It just kind of seems like he, he knows. I'm going down that right side. That time he gave it a little bit of extra time to get his guy down the field, but the throw sailed out of bounds. I like him taking a shot on first down, though, after a big play to get the first down. Yeah, got that Web Insurance Agency first down to move the chains. Brings up second and 10 from the 41-yard line. Throw in 41. Is Ben Burkholder will line up as the wing. Miller to the left of Girton in the gun. He'll take the handoff, run off right tackle out to the 45. A gain of four on the play for the Rockets to make third down a little more manageable. 
A good cut back inside right there by Miller as the defensive end got kicked out and he was able to just put his foot in the ground and get up field. Now Kylan Mays leaves, leaves the field for this third down. It's a good uh, uh, defensive lineman, excuse me. Been providing a lot of penetration and making things difficult on Girton on passing downs and here it's third and seven. Clock continuing to tick as we go under 10 minutes to play in the third quarter. Rockets looking to pick up a first down and they'll get a false start. That's a wide receiver again, Garrett. Yeah, sent Ben Burkholder in motion and a wide receiver moved a little early and instead of third and five, it'll be about third and 11. Tough one there, and again, it's, it's week one. You're still trying to get things together, but the Rockets have definitely struggled to stay out of their own way in this one. A couple penalties on third down that have yeah, just made things difficult. Tough timing on the penalties as well. So they'll go back to that empty set with Gurdon in the gun by his lonesome. Two to the left, two to the right. Miller lined up as a tight end on the left side. He'll throw over the middle. It's caught by Walker out to the 46-yard line. He's tackled by Jamison Raider. It's going to bring up fourth and about five. Yeah, at this point, you almost have to go for it, don't you? Uh, yeah, but their quarterback is their punter. We saw him kind of drop back and pretend like he was going to punt and then roll off the left side. Gives you some options, certainly. Looking for that web insurance agency. First down are the Rockets. Empty backfield for the junior signal caller one more time. Picked up that fourth down conversion in the first half. They'll look. Fires, tipped, intercepted up the far sideline by Levi Schrader, and he might take it all the way, and he will. Levi Schrader, the inner INT pick six variety, makes it 34 0 Columbus Grove. Oh, this is all new to me, this light show <laughs> after a touchdown. That would get me so hyped up. I love that play right there. All he was trying to do was knock that ball down on, on fourth down, right? He, he knew he was yeah. going to get a turnover on down, so Schrader just kind of knocked it up in the air. Well, the ball's floating there. He might as well just grab it, and he does, and turns out okay as he scores the touchdown, and now we're at 34 nothing with a PAT pending. Columbus Grove, that's the start you want. A defensive Northwestern, Northwest Ohio recycling touchdown. 34 nothing. Columbus Grove is Evan Verhoff on for the extra point. He's four for four so far tonight. And he will put that one through the uprights and good, make him five for five on the extra point. And it is now 35 nothing. Columbus Grove will step aside. More third quarter action coming up here on WLSN. Touchdown tonight brought to you by Northwest Ohio Recycling in Pandora. And top dollar for aluminum, copper, brass, scrap iron, and scrap cars. Call 419-384-3392. Columbus Grove about to kick it away. And we now have a running clock on the Sprunger Insurance scoreboard. It's gotten to the 35-point mark is the kick fielded by... Pandora Gilboa tried to bring it to the near sideline. Instead, punished at the 22-yard line as Chase Meyer brought it out that far and got the stop sign by the Columbus Grove D. Yeah, nice job by Grant Eversall just flying through, making that tackle right there. So this drive starts around the 30-yard line, and or excuse me, the 20-yard line. 21. Well, man, bring it out about move it up. 22. 22. And that's where the Rockets will get started. Garrett, you can't do it all at once, can you? Nope, can't eat an elephant in one bite. Got to take your chomps. As Girton will be joined in the backfield by Burke Holder and Miller. And they'll hand it to Burke Holder. Spun down to the 26-yard line. Miller with the run on the play. Yeah. It good was run. Miller. Yeah, good run there. Picks up four yards, it looks like. Looks like Josh Gannon got the stop there. One of 20 seniors on the roster for Goodness Columbus gracious. Grove. Second, six for the it's incredible when a Divi Division seven school, a small school, you look across the field and, the, and their subs take up the entire sideline. Yeah, line, no, right? it's, it's great. What a program. It's a great sight on a Thursday night. Full stands as the Rockets 
another take false another start. false start penalty. 20 seniors on the roster for Columbus Grove that have aspirations to play Marion Local in the Division 7 state semifinal, which is presumptuous from the one the state saying, hey, we're going to put 26 and 28 together like they usually <laughs> do, but that Marion Local will make it to the state semifinals. But Columbus Grove, you know, they, they have the old Ric Flair, if you want to beat the best, you got to beat, or you want to be the best, Absolutely. you got to beat the best. And, and they really haven't, <laughs> Columbus Grove has somewhat been, I, they're almost like Spencerville in boys basketball where when you want to be Division Four, they're Division Three. Yeah, or you want, sure. You go, when you want to be Division Seven, they've been Division Six. Yeah. And you want to be Division Six, they're Division Seven. As Girton scampers up the near side, getting very close to a Web Insurance Agency first down as he's pushed out by Aiden Patrick. But just the t I don't know how many times Columbus Grove has lost to the eventual state champion in the playoffs, but it's enough that just it probably lights a fire under you that they want to they want to extinguish in 2024. Yeah, you mentioned Marion Local, but they're Mac Foe for Sales, the team that knocked Columbus Grove out last year. Yeah, lost to Coldwater in the state semifinals. They've gotten a long way in the postseason, just haven't been able to get over that Midwest Athletic Conference hump. Third and one here. As Miller will take the carry, bring it back to the near side. It has the Web Insurance Agency first down to the 35. And Andrew Miller done a, doing a nice job at that running back spot. Yeah, you're, you're absolutely right. We haven't talked enough or a lot about this offense because we really haven't seen a ton. But Andrew yeah. Miller, just a fantastic leader for this team. Every time he's gotten the ball tonight, yeah, it's been it's been a long night. And, and yeah, there hasn't been much room to run through. But he's done a nice job keeping his legs going. He's working hard. You can tell he's the leader of this team. And, and you can see it on his jersey, too, all the, all the, uh, the grass stains. I'm sure mom's going to struggle tonight in the laundry. Miller, a first team all. Blanchard Valley Conference performer on both offense and defense last year as he stiff arms a defender to get back to the line of scrimmage. A great effort there by Miller to get back to avoid a big loss. Or dad, by the way. I said mom's going to do the laundry, <laughs> but I know in that house, I know the Millers. I know both of them are, are, uh, are great parents and great, great family over there for sure. Miller basically doesn't come off the field except for special teams. He's playing every down on offense, every middle linebacker on defense. Yeah, absolutely. He's going to play an awful lot of football this year for the Rockets. He's going to line up as the inside receiver with three to the right, past the halfway point of the third quarter. Here on the Sprunger Insurance scoreboard as Girton looks to throw on second and ten. Over the middle, it's caught. Lane Lee's going to be right at the first down marker. It's like a yard short. I was going to say, we'll see if it's a measurement maybe or... It's going to be third and about three quarters of a yard away from picking up that Web Insurance Agency first down. And give Corey Girton credit. He comes over to the sideline every play to get the play from Matt Hershey. So tack on a couple, a mile or so from each play. He's got to run from the middle of the field to the near sideline. Yes, he'll take the snap and hand off to Miller. He'll lower his head and barrel through the Grove defense for a Web Insurance Agency first down. Well, this has been a great drive for Pandora. Yeah. And like we said right when it started, right, you can't eat an elephant all at once. And right now just chipping away. Nice sustained drive here in this third quarter. Building a little bit of rhythm and momentum. Finding out who you are a little bit here in this third quarter. Doing some tinkering as they'll prepare for Bluffton next Friday night. As Miller will go in motion to the near side in the flat. He'll catch the pass from Girton. Past the midfield strike where he's brought down. As Aiden Patrick makes the tackle. And the Bluffton team, kind of an interesting storyline in this rivalry. Last year, Pandora beat Columbus Grove. Yep. The next week, lost to Bluffton. And then week 10, Bluffton lost to Columbus Grove. And and again, a couple weeks later, Columbus Grove able to beat Bluffton in the uh, the playoffs. And so, uh, these kind of a, it's kind of a triangle yeah, of rivalry, say, if you will. Triangle: we beat you, you beat us, we beat them. Yes. Burkholder on the right, Miller on the left, and Burkholder will get to carry. Tries to power to the 45-yard line, a gain of three. We go under three minutes to play here in quarter number three on the Sprunger Insurance scoreboard. Tackle made by the big Both show. teams still with all three of their least famous recipe chicken timeouts here in the second half. A couple yards at a time, offense looking good, but a couple yards at a time works 
most of the time, but when you're down 35 in the second half, it could be tough. But you also think about it's going to be a long season, right? And you want to yeah. leave this game with some momentum, with some confidence, and you want to have something you can look back on and say, hey, we did do some things well. And this drive so far, again, they, they still have some work to do, but this drive is definitely one they can look back on Burke and say, we can do some things. I'm sorry oh, to no, absolutely. cut you off. My apologies. Burke Holder with the carry. And he does move the chains. Web Insurance Agency first down. So really, uh, nice job running the football here on this drive for Pandora Gilboa, where they just said, you know, well, let's get back to basics. We'll give it to Burke Holder. We'll give it to Miller and see where we go here. Corey Gertens kept it once. Had a nice sustained drive here. And sometimes when you're a defense up 35, you might, you know, not, not fire yeah. off quite as hard as you have before. And, uh, you know, defensive backs maybe not quite as locked in as they, they were at the beginning of this game. I'm not saying that's the case, but it certainly could be. And Girton will fire just a bit high as Nate Walker climbed the ladder to try to grab that one. It is a running clock situation here on the Sprunger Insurance scoreboard. So even though it's the incompletion, we're at 90 seconds remaining in quarter number three. So second and 10 upcoming. Again, the clock continues to tick despite the incompletion. It's already down to 115 left in this quarter. Burkhold to the left of Girton. He'll take the handoff. Runs to the near side at the 40. Gain of maybe two on third down. And I'll tell you what, Columbus Grove had talked about in the preseason, like we're, we're going to need to learn to adapt to not having as much size as we have in the past. I think mission accomplished at least in night number one. They, they look great up front, and really they haven't brought a, a ton in, in terms of blitzing, right? The front four has done a really nice job getting penetration or at least holding their ground, and then the, the secondary, the linebacker is able to do a nice job coming up and making plays. Empty back field for Girton. Could be the final play here of quarter number three as he'll stand in the pocket, fire across the middle through the arms of Andrew Miller. As Landon Huston on the coverage. Brings up fourth and long for the Rockets. And that'll bring up fourth and nine. And I think Pandora Gilboa content to watch the numbers tick off the Sprunger Insurance scoreboard here to end quarter number three, unless they're gonna snap it real quick. Well, might think about it here. I don't think you're gonna get there and that'll do it for the third. We've played three. Sprunger Insurance scoreboard says 35-0. Columbus Grove over Pandora Gilboa. We've got the fourth for you when we return here on WOSA. Tonight's game brought to you by Dale's Concrete and Decorative Stamping and Lipsick for all your commercial, residential, concrete needs. It is 35-0 Columbus Grove here as Pandora Gilboa forced, faced I should say, with a fourth and nine to get underway in this fourth quarter. They've done most of their work in this drive on the ground. Likely have to open up the playbook here, try to get the ball downfield through the air. Girton will be in the gun. Miller to his right. Burke Holder in motion. Girton has to step up. Tried to stay on his feet. Couldn't. And Kylan Mays gets the sack to end the drive for PG. So the clock will stop with the change of possession. But Grove now with a great running game and a running clock. You have to imagine they'll keep it on the ground here. And be content with this lead. It is a rivalry game, though. You never quite know. This fourth quarter tonight brought to you by Citizens National Bank. See how they're building businesses one relationship at a time at cnbohio.com. Landon Best back out on the field for the Bulldogs as Josh Gannon will line up at running back. The 5'6", 165-pound senior. As Best will hand it off to Gannon. He's got a little bit of room to run to the near side across midfield. Breaks one tackle out to the 30-yard line. A nice carry by Josh Gannon there on his first attempt here this evening. Welcome to the game, Mr. Gannon. Nice job bouncing that one to the outside, getting into the second level. 
and running it upfield. Running with a purpose there. We're number 44, like to see that. The ball spotted at the 32 yard line. Picked up the Web Insurance Agency first down on that scamper. Looks like Dylan Mertz in it, the fullback spot, that H back to the right of Landon Best. Might be the end of the day for Trenton Barraza. Gannon spins off one tackle, punished for it after a big stick here and great sportsmanship by the Bulldogs to lift Ben Burkholder up off the turf after that stick on the Bulldog running back. And that was a textbook tackle right there. Absolutely. Got his shoulder right into the stomach of the ball carrier, drove his feet until he fell to the turf. So second and six. Upcoming for the Bulldogs, already leading 35-nothing, driving once more. As best. The first team offensive line still on for Columbus Grove as Ty Meyer will stand over the football. Gannon behind Best in the pistol. Takes a, nope, Best will keep it himself, pulled it at just the right time, and got out to the 24-yard line. Takes it inside the time the Rockets brought Ben Burkholder off the edge and was able to get in the backfield, just couldn't wrap up Best. Best took off up the field to make it third and manageable. So that is, as Evan said, third and short. I'm Garrett C. Wright, joined alongside Evan Skiller tonight here from Climber Stadium. The season opener for high school football, a beautiful night in Putnam County. And now we'll get a backup quarterback as Alex Meyer, the 5'7", 130-pound freshman, steps into the contest to take the snap. He lost the football. And it's recovered by Pandora Gilboa. The second turnover tonight by the, forced by the Rockets. Listen, a moment hopefully he'll forget, right? <laughs> but can you imagine being a freshman coming into the game, your first snap ever? Ends up on the turf. That's yeah. tough, but Alex Meyer, good to see him in the game. 5'7", freshman getting some action. And you think about this Bulldogs team, a team that continues to reload year after year, and that's what a good program does. And got a guy like Alex Meyer next up. Yeah, don't uh, – no, nothing substitutes for playing on, I guess, Thursday nights. I was going to say, if nothing plays under the lights on Friday night, spiffy lights here at Climber Stadium on a Thursday night, but it is experience for the young pups. As the snap goes over Girton's head, he'll have to chase it. Picks it up, comes to the near side, gets a pick from one of the referees, and will go back down. Maybe he didn't gain a couple of yards? He did. He got back to the line of scrimmage and then a couple extra. That's great work like there two by, yards. by Corey Girton. Hey, when you run 20 yards to get a two-yard gain, sometimes you're a little frustrated, but hey, coach is happy. Could have just fallen on the ball inside of his own 10-yard line or so. Instead, picks it up, does something with it. Makes it second and eight as we approach eight minutes to go on the Sprunger Insurance Agency scoreboard. Miller behind Girton. Takes the carry off the right side. Makes one man miss, makes another out to the 40-yard line. Rumble into the 46-yard line. A big carry by the first team all Blanchard Valley Conference performer. Longest run of the night for Andrew Miller. It's a nice, nice carry there for the six foot, 215 pound senior. Been a frustrating night on the offensive side of the football for the Rockets, but Miller, a bit of a bruiser through that Grove defense. Guy that's been getting carries for most of his high school career at the varsity level. Girton, the handoff to Miller one more time. Gets to the 50-yard line. Andrew Miller with the run on the play. Miller takes it into Bulldog territory. Both teams with all three least famous recipe chicken timeouts remaining here in this second half. You see Miller slow to get up there. Yeah. He's been carrying the load for this team, tired legs, and Parker, takes a well-deserved knee over on the sideline. Instant replay tonight brought to you by Hawker Drywall and Plastering. Visit them at hawkerdrywall.com to see how they can help you. Burkholder will join Girton in the gun now as Miller takes that breather. Burkholder with some room. Burkholder down the near sideline. 
Hastings beat one man is inside the 10, dragging the defender to the goal line. Did he get there? Might have a horse collar tackle. They'll say he's down just shy to go, stepped out of bounds at about the three yard line. But a big rumble for Ben Burkholder. I'm confused though, because he definitely got into the end zone. No signal yet that if it's a touchdown or not, the official is parked at about the three yard line next to a flag. Sitting right next to drive time, Danny Holbrook, who's broadcasting <laughs> for the radio. He agrees with me, man. It does not seem like they went out of bounds, and Pandora still talking to them about the result of that play. There's a penalty marker down. It is a horse collar. Well, and the referee went to throw the flag and accidentally threw the fumble beanie that you put you throw ah, when the when it, the ball comes out. Then he threw the flag, and I think maybe in the midst of that confusion, he. He wasn't too sure about the result of the play. And hey, listen, I don't have the benefit of replay. Maybe I'm oh, absolutely yeah, no, incorrect. It, it's just kind of a, a weird play. And uh, lot sure. going on right there inside the five yard line on that sideline. So half the distance to the goal puts the nose of the football darn near at the goal line with five minutes to go. And the Rockets. Are in the gun. Girton. Burkholder to his left, right, and Girton will keep it himself, and he's in for a touchdown for Pandora Gilboa. <laughs> Northwest Ohio recycling touchdown tonight for the Rockets. Northwest Ohio recycling and Pandora paying top dollar for aluminum copper, brass, scrap iron, and scrap cars. Call 419-384-3392. Good play right there. Girton just ran right behind the offensive line. It's a snap and just trying to keep it simple. Able to score and now inside 35 points. So the clock will go back to a normal operation. And Lane Lee will come on to kick the extra point. Girton will hold. Lane Lee in for the extra point attempt for the Rockets. Girton will take the snap, put it down. Kick is up through the uprights and good. Sprunger Insurance scoreboard says 35 Columbus Grove, Pandora Gilboa seven. Step aside, more fourth quarter action coming up when we return here on WOSN. High School Football tonight on WOSM brought to you in part by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wampak, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken. Home style happens here. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken would hit the spot right about mm, now. Tell me about it. I'll tell you what. We talked at the beginning of that drive or maybe in the middle of that drive that you always want something, even if you get beat in a game, especially early on, you want something you can take away, something you can look at, something you can show your team to say, hey, we can do this. This is how we need to execute. And they did get that penalty, on that last drive. Penalty flag on the far side is Trevin Baxter still meandering and weaving his way through the Pandora Gilboa kick unit. Will cut back. He'll have an unabated path to the end zone, but a penalty flag is going to bring it back. Yes. A fantastic individual effort there by Trevin Baxter, but it looks like it's going to be for not. How frustrating would that be? You run around <laughs> that much, don't know there's a flag on the ground. You get into the end zone, and then they say, hey, sorry by about the way, that. By the way, coming back, and you showed Liberty Benton, I got moves. Yeah. Tell you what, that was a really nice return that there by Baxter. Fantastic effort there by Trevin Baxter, the 5'11 junior. Had the first touchdown tonight, a 38-yard pass from Landon Best, but thought he had a uh, kick return for a touchdown, but it's coming back. You know what, if you didn't see it on the film, you still put it on the highlight reel, I think. But you know what, hey, watch me hey, meander through this deep. We've got so much technology, you can just take the flag That's out of true. that play. See if we can't get AI to remove the flag from the field, from the Officials pocket. Alan Iverson working on video. Yes, now? that that is that, every time I read the words AI, I think <laughs> the answer. So instead of six more points and putting us back into a running clock, 
The Sprunger Insurance scoreboard says 35-7 with 4.21 to go. And the ball will be spotted at the 32-yard line. Big day of football coming up tomorrow on Friday Absolutely. night, which if you're watching this, it is either Friday night or past Friday night. But Pickle Lime a senior, Bath New Bremen. Got games you know, Elida in Toledo, Rogers, Kenton and Eastwood, Liberty Benton, Ottawa, Glandorf. That's a great week one night. matchup. Really good week one matchup. The pitch to Gavin Baxter. Lost the football, and luckily for the Bulldogs, a home yeah, team member, I think Trenton Winecoop, Wincoop dumped, jumped on the football. And Trenton Wincoop saves a day there a little bit for the Bulldogs. Another one, WOSN is covering on Friday, St. Henry, St. Mary's. That one airs Saturday at 7 p.m. We'll have the Liberty Benton Ottawa Glandorf game Friday night at 10 p.m. as well. Again, football Friday kicking off your Parkway squad up against Crestview. Big rivalry contest. As Alex Meyer steps back behind center to take the snap. I believe Carter Flores the center now is the handoff to Brody McClure hmm. looking to get a Web Insurance Agency first down. Hey, look at the future, Brody McClure, another freshman, 5'9", 155, but that's all muscle. He carries the defense there for a few extra yards as he nears the first down and gets right up to the 40, needs the 41. So just shy of that Web Insurance Agency first down, but the numbers ticking off that Sprunger Insurance scoreboard. Columbus Grove going to move to 1-0 on the season. Meyer will go back in the pistol. Wayne Coop will join him. As they won't snap the ball until there's less than five on the play clock. Do just that. Wincoop, the carry. Did he get the Web Insurance Agency first down? I believe he did. He did. They'll move the chains. Two, at least one more first down, maybe two, in order to run this clock out on this drive. Both teams look like they're going to take their least famous recipe, chicken timeouts home with them. Barring something going haywire here or need to get a timeout. Maybe only got 10 guys on the field, something like that. Alex Meyer. Snap goes over his head. He'll just pounce on it. Live to fight another day. If you're watching this, make sure you know you can stream at WOSN channel anytime. Anywhere for $8 per month. You can download it on Roku. Apple TV, uh, you can sign up at, I think it's app.wosn.tv yes, as well that you can go to and catch high school sports all school year here on WOSN. Decided to call some football, volleyball, soccer this fall. Second and 20, another high snap. Meyer climbs the ladder, gets it, immediately pressured. He'll scamper off that far side. Get back to just shy of the 40. We go from Landon Best, 5'11 quarterback. Alex Meyer, 5'7. Just a little bit high. Only a freshman, though. Time to grow. And He's got a good he, handle there. Yeah, you can Didn't, tell. He yeah. did not panic. He, and the snap went over his head. He wisely just fell on the football. That went a little high. Didn't panic. Picked up a couple of yards. He showed poise as a freshman on a Thursday night under big rivalry game, LED lights. I just like the lights. Tell it's you the sweet, truth. man. It's sweet. I took a video. I sent it to all my friends. You just don't see that in Northwest Ohio very often. Really cool. There's a chest high snap to Meyer. Ooh, a big stick there from that Pandora Gil Boa defensive line. Brody McClure with the run on the play. Down Didn't the see who the number was. And I think, is that it? 35 on the clock, it is that it. That is it. Tyler Pugh, the tackle there for Pandora Gilboa. Nice stick, and that will do it for tonight's matchup. A 35-7 victory for Pandora, or for Columbus Grove, I beg your pardon. The homestanding Bulldog grab a 35-7 victory over their Route 12 rivals. And it was a... Really, uh, from the get-go, Evan, that Columbus Grove was focused and ready to play there in that first quarter and took
took control early and held on for the entire night. Yeah, and until the end of that game, we saw a couple fumbles with the, the backups in, but it was almost mistake-free football. The execution yeah. was fantastic from Columbus Grove all night, whether it was a pass play, run play, defensively, they were in the backfield, they were making things hard on Corey Girton to find anyone open downfield. They had a couple interceptions, just all around a great performance for a team that you've said multiple times has their sights set yeah. on a state title. And today, I think they showed why most people think they have a really good chance to make that run. So that will do it for us here at Climber Stadium. Columbus Grove, a commanding 35-7 to win over Pandora Gilboa. With the loss, the Rockets fall to 0-1-1. They'll take on Bluffton next Friday night. Meanwhile, Columbus Grove at Liberty Benton in another big-time matchup next Friday night. That'll do it for us. For our fantastic WOSN crew and Evan Skilleter, I'm Garrett Seawright saying so long. The final score, the final time. Columbus Grove victorious tonight, 35-7. to 7. Catch you next time right here on WOSN.